Hi, you guys. It's T.A. Megan. And did you know that yesterday on December 8th was John Lennon's birthday? Now, you might recognize that name because we talk about John Lennon a lot in music history. He was part of the Beatles. That's how you recognize his name. And he does some solo work, which uh, we learn about usually later in the year. But those of you who had music history last year will probably remember. So anyway, I got this special book from my nephew, Joe, and it's about John Lennon. There he is on the cover. And written in his sunglasses is John's Secret Dreams, The Life of John Lennon. Now this is a longer book. Um, some parts of it are sad. But the artwork is really nice and actually his story is really nice. It was written by Doreen Rappaport and the pictures illustrations are by Brian Collier. So there's lots of quotes throughout this book that are actually lyrics from his uh, songs and from other things. The first thing I'm going to read is, I like to write about me because I know about me, he once said. And there's the reporters recording the interview. So I'm gonna read the words and then I'll show you the pictures as they come up, okay? Let's get to the first one. John's mother took his hand and they left their house in Penny Lane District of Liverpool, England to go to his new home with his Aunt Mimi and his Uncle George. His father was a merchant marine. He was away at sea and his mother was feeling trapped and didn't want to take care of John anymore. He was only five years old. And here's a quote from one of his songs. Mama don't go, daddy come home. Mama don't go, daddy come home. So here he is on a train, it looks like going to his new home with his Aunt Mimi and his Uncle George. He looks sad. Aunt Mimi was caring but strict. There was no rough housing and no comic books. Her house was filled with books though, and his uncle George taught him how to read. John loved the author Lewis Carroll and his fun, funny sounding rhymes. John wrote his own stories and drew pictures to go with them. How wonderful it would be to be a poet or an artist. But his Aunt Mimi would never allow it. So John kept his secret, his dream, his secret. And here's another quote from a different song. Everywhere people stare and every day I can see them laugh at me and I hear them say, hey, you've got to hide your love away. So here's a picture of him when he's young and it looks like he's writing and drawing, but he's keeping it a secret from his Aunt Mimi, who's back there, you can see. I'm glad that none of us have to be secretive about wanting to be an artist or a poet. So when John was 16, his mother came back into his life. A musical craze called the Skiffle was sweeping Liverpool then. John wanted a guitar. His Aunt Mimi said no. His mother bought him a banjo and John formed his very own band. Sailors were bringing back records from America. Little Richard rattling the piano, whooping and hooting and howling. Chuck Berry, the poet of rock, singing upward slides and Elvis Presley the King, wailing and groan, groaning, growling, singing of heartbreak and loneliness. John, feelings John had, but was too afraid to share. Rock and roll, it was grabbing John's heart 
and driving a beat shaking into his being, a revolution of rhythm and sound. It changed the world and it changed John Lennon. Here's a quote from a song. I thought I could feel, feel, feel music touching my soul, something warm, suddenly cold, and the spirit dance was unfolding. Here's a painting of John when he was 16 with all those records he was buying that was making him fall in love with rock and roll. And I understand because I really like it too. Then at a gig, John met somebody named Paul McCartney who could play the guitar upside down. While John kept, John only knew two chords. John asked him to join his group and they started writing songs. They made up a melody and sang it over and over and over until they knew it by heart. They worked on the lyrics. John would write a line and then Paul wrote another. And not long after John's mother died, it hurt too much to cry. Mother, you had me, but I never had you, he wrote. And one of the song lines that they wrote was, Paul wrote, well, she was just 17. And John wrote, and you know what I mean. Here's a picture of their hands playing the guitars together. John went to art school, but all he really dreamed of was rock and roll. Aunt Mimi told him he could never make a living as a guitarist. George Harrison, who played guitar better than either John or Paul, joined the group and they played in nightclubs and dressed in black leather and Texas cowboy boots. Throw the mic around, lie on the floor, shout, jump, stomp, sing. My heart went boom when I crossed that room. Here they are in their black leather suits, playing the guitars and singing. Sorry, this book is so big. The Beatles recorded John and Paul's songs with a new drummer, Ringo Starr. Well, she sh looked at me and I, I could see that before too long, I fall in love with her. Love, love me do. You know I love you. Wham! One hit single after another. We have one, two, three gold albums. Top of the charts, top of the world. And only 24 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had so many fans that policemen in England called Bobbies had to keep them back. Beatlemania swept the whole world. Wherever the Beatles went, flash bulbs popped. Reporters shouted questions. Fans screamed and shrieked and fought with police to get close enough to touch them. Wherever they performed, before John sang his first words, the screaming was so loud he couldn't hear George, Paul, or Ringo even play their instruments, and the fans couldn't hear them either. Say you're looking for a place to go where nobody knows your name with one eye on the Hall of Fame. There's all the Beatles. Right there. There's John. There's Paul, there's George, and there's Ringo. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down and I'd appreciate you being round. Help me get my feet back on the ground. 
And soon John felt suffocated by fame and trapped. He was now married with his first son. He moved his family to London, hoping he would be happier. He wasn't. He tried bad things like drugs, hoping they'd push his bad feelings away, but they didn't. He studied meditation in India, hoping he'd find inner peace, but he did, couldn't. Won't you please, please help me? Oh, he sounds so sad. And he did. He wrote all his songs about his feelings. People in London were buzzing about an artist named Yoko Ono. John went to see her new show. Yoko handed John a card. Breathe, read the card. And he did. And he kind of laughed silently. A magnifying glass was hanging from a painting on the ceiling. He looked through it and he read, yes, in tiny letters. How wonderful to see yes instead of no. Yes is the answer and you know that for sure. Yes is surrender, you gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. And there he is and Yoko Ono is behind him. I don't know if you can see that. And he's looking through the magnifying glass at the word yes. The Beatles stopped touring and wrote new songs. People felt longing in John's songs about his childhood haunt. Let me take you down because I'm going to Strawberry Fields. Nothing is real. People laughed at his nonsense lyrics. I am the Eggman. They are the Eggman. I am the Walrus. Goo goo. Did you? Look, he looks like the Eggman in this picture, doesn't he? His son Julian painted a picture and John responded with a song. Picture yourself in a boat on a river with tangerine trees and marmalade skies. Somebody calls you, you answer quite slowly, a girl with kaleidoscope eyes. Some people call John a poet. In a recording studio, the Beatles experimented with sounds never heard in rock music before. Woke up, got out of bed, lent an alarm clock ring, blow bubbles through a straw, dragged a comb across my head, swirl water in a bucket, play a comb, found my way downstairs, drank a cup, had organs, sitars, mellotrons, have 40 musicians play their lowest note on their highest as fast or as slow as they want, play the melody forward and then backwards. And somebody spoke and I went into a dream. Rock and roll, anything you wanted it to be. Popular music was changed forever. There they are. All four of them experimenting with the different sounds that they could put in the music with their recording equipment. Nobody had ever done that before. Despite the praise, John secretly wanted to leave the group, but he was scared. I don't believe in Beatles. I just believe in me. Yoko and me, and that's reality. He believed Yoko Ono could help him with the blank spaces ahead. He divorced his wife and then married Yoko. All my little plans and schemes lost in some forgotten dream. Seems that all I was really doing was waiting for you. There he is with his new wife, Yoko. 
very controversial. Some people like her, some people don't. War raged in Vietnam and John and Yoko wanted to be, it, I'm sorry, John and Yoko wanted to end the violence. They held a bed in for peace. As a honeymoon, John dreamed of writing a song as powerful as We Shall Overcome, the anthem of the civil rights movement. And one day the lyrics came to him. All we are saying is give peace a chance. Soon, wherever people protested war, they sang John Lennon's songs. So this picture is the back of their heads with all the reporters around their bed for their famous bed in. John was not the only Beatle who was unhappy. After 10 years of working together, John, Paul, George, and Ringo went their separate ways. Here's all their feet walking away from each other. People were upset because they loved the Beatles, but they weren't happy together anymore. <clears throat> now John sang mostly solo or with Yoko. He continued sharing his dreams for a more loving world. War is over if you want it. War is over now. Yoko encouraged him to be more daring. He shared feelings he had been afraid to share. He wrote of the pain of his parents deserting him and of the joy of being a father for the second time. It'll be just like starting over. There he is at his piano, singing with Yoko looking out the window. He dreamed about being 60 and being with Yoko. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. When our time has come, we will be as one. That dream did not come true. John Lennon was murdered when he was 40 years old. And now it's up to us to help John's dream for the world come true. So there he is with Yoko before he got shot. And there's Yoko. And in her glasses it says, imagine. She's much older there. She's still trying to make his dream come true. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. That's the end of this special book. And it says at the very end, war is over if you want it. Here's the back of the book. Now he had kind of a sad life, but he made a great impact on society and the world. So I think he's an important man to know about. All right, I'm happy to have shared this book with you. Bye-bye.